Today on the channel, it's the return of the Kyle Peterson Top 5, and in today's video, we're taking a trip into the past as I'm counting down my top five toy hunting spots of my childhood. And the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run forever! Back to the channel for another edition of the Kyle Peterson Top 5, a Wednesday tradition on this second YouTube channel, and we'll see if it sticks on that day, but have been putting top five lists over on the new Kyle Peterson 2.0 channel, as well as the weekly ones, of course, every single Thursday on the original channel. So two top fives most weeks here on the channel, but today's video is a special one, and it's a fun one, and I think a lot of us would have fun with this one, as this is going to be a very nostalgic type of video here, as I count down my top five childhood favorite places to get toys action figures what have you and of course if you were like me and a lot of us of course were like me if you're watching this but we loved hunting for figures we still love hunting for figures uh, but as a kid there were certain spots that were a little bit funner than others maybe some of these places are long gone you know Toys R Us is going to be on this list but where um, a lot of these are long gone unfortunately and this is the ones that I frequented as a kid growing up in the Midwest now I know other places on the East Coast you get like Ames and Hill and these places I've never ventured into. So obviously, if I've never been there, they're not going to be on this list. But everybody had local stores, things like that, before the monopolies of the Walmarts, Targets, really put their foot in and took hold of everything. Put the Toys R Uses out of the businesses, the KBs, Children's Palace, you name it, all those ones. But as I look back in my childhood and all the places I got to go to, uh, these are the top five. And of course, like any other top five list we do here on the channel, we're going to start at number five, work our way to number one, number one being my favorite of all time. Gonna ask you to do the same thing. Put your list in the comments below. Put them in order, that's the hard part, but that's the fun part. So without further ado, let's check it out. Let's start it off at number five. All right, we start the countdown off at number five, and number five is one I'm guessing not everybody has ever been to. It is a store called Ben Franklin's. Oh, Ben Franklin. What do you ever do besides opening up a five and dime store? I don't know. I don't even know where they got the name, but Ben Franklin, an all-timer of a store. There's currently two left in the state I live in here, uh, and they're on life support, and they really have no good action figures anymore, unfortunately. But as a kid, going to my grandparents in small town, rural America, these stores were everywhere. You guys probably had your own versions of Ben Franklin's, or if you're lucky enough, you had Ben Franklin's. And uh, my grandma's towns, they also have places like Pomida and Places and Alco. A lot of these places that are no longer around anymore, unfortunately. But Ben Franklin's was always an absolute favorite to me. I always seemed to find something there at either grandma's uh, towns they lived in. Could always find something good. I'd always get something. Because guess what? Your grandma loves you. She's going to buy you something. She's not going to get you the aircraft carrier. She might not even get you, uh, you know, a big uh, play set or a big um, vehicle. She's not going to go all the way in on that. But she'll get you at least a Joe. Maybe a grandma vehicle, as we say on the channel. One of those vehicles that come with a Joe or something, for example, in the G.I. Joe lane. But there was a lot of good Ben Franklins of the world out there. Ben Franklins was always a fun time for me. Think of it like a super, super small Walmart, really, at the end of the day. But they always had a good toy aisle. And back in the day, especially the 80s and early 90s, you could pretty much find whatever you wanted to eventually. And Ben Franklin's, not a lot of feet in the ground in those stores. Usually it was pretty easy. And I've told the story before on the channel. There was one where my grandma was one time out of the blue. They had a sign that said, Downstairs, more toys. And I want to say this was probably 1995, 1996. So I was a teenager at the time. And went down there and said, what's up with these toys down here? And of course, me being a teenager, I have no money. Have no money. I'm just poor. I'm barely, I'm just hitchhiking store to store. I'm lucky my grandma would even give me a ride at this point. Go all the way downstairs. What do they have? Long story short, they have pretty much every toy you wanted from the 80s, all men on card. I remember 1996, have you? LJN's men on card. I remember Roddy Piper was one I never had, and they had the Roddy Piper there. Could not believe it. They had all old starting lineups all the way back to 1988. They had G.I. Joe. They had the Hydrofoil down there. I remember that one specifically. Old Joes that were long out of circulation still hanging out down there. 
course, tons of girls' toys, things like that. I just could not believe my eyes when I was seeing it. It was truly like I took a trip back in time in this basement, and everything was dirt cheap because it was on clearance. They were trying to get rid of it, and I had no money. My grandma, she let me buy one thing. I don't even really remember what I bought. I wish I would have bought the Roddy Piper. Um, but it was just a wild, wild experience down there, and I'll never forget that. I remember going home telling my dad about it and uh, just thinking, why don't we go back? It was like a three-hour drive, uh, maybe four hours round trip. I don't know what it would have been, but I don't know why we never went back there. It's a weird thing. I need to ask my dad about that. He probably just blew me off and said, oh, this crazy story. There's no way that's possible. I don't know what happened. But Ben Franklin's always going to hold a piece of my heart. I'll always remember the time with both of my grandparents going to those, shopping for stuff, getting clothes, getting food, you name it, whatever there. But most specifically, toys at those places. So Ben Franklin's coming in hot. And number five. Next up in the countdown, we go to one of the all-time greats. Have to imagine this will be on a lot of lists here. What am I talking about? Well, we're taking a trip to the mall. We're headed to KB Toy Store. All KB. Always kind of thought of as the little Toys R Us. And I had a few different KBs in my area at the local malls, of course. Had three pretty big malls around me. Had a KB at every single one of those. And it was always a good time, but of course, always an expensive time. So when I was a kid, and you know your parents could say, okay, you can get this, spend this amount of money. I always knew KB was more of a last resort type place. I would always kind of compartmentalize things in my head. Okay, Toys R Us has this, Target, Walmart, whatever. And I'd say KB's kind of last resort because it was always so expensive. However, you get the three for tens like the uh, Hasbro wrestling figures, uh, things like that. They would have deals. They would have clearance stuff from time to time. But I also remember KB being a lot of heartbreak disappointment with a lot of the same stock repeatedly, not a lot of fresh stock compared to Toys R Us, Target, and some of the other places. I guess your mileage may vary. Maybe you had a really good KB that stocked all the time, but I do think we get some blinders on with KB from time to time, unlike Toys R Us, which they all have their issues, of course, but KB being a very small footprint, being a very small uh, little store, they didn't quite turn and burn like Toys R Us, it seemed like to me at least, uh, but a lot of good stuff found there. I remember getting a lot of sets early there of stuff that was KB exclusive, especially during the Marvel uh, a toy biz time frame there was a lot of stuff i picked up there that you could only get at kb and then unfortunately i remember kb going out of business like a lot of us do and i remember omaha nebraska still had a kb where my state no longer had one and i remember taking the trip to um, Omaha to pick up some of the Jack's Rockies figures. Uh, I think they had the rings exclusive. I'm trying to think what was it. Oh, they had a three pack. It was Polly, uh, Apollo, and uh, Rocky three pack. And it was a KB exclusive. I had to drive all the way to Omaha. Crazy enough, luckily they just had them chilling on the shelf. I remember picking those up out there. Uh, so you get exclusives at KB from time to time. But one of those places, and of course, if you were a kid in the 80s and 90s, you spent a lot of time in the mall. Your parents would want to go there shopping. You'd hit up the food court, whatever. So KB was always a destination. You had to go to Sam Goody because I always knew Goody got them. We all knew that. But I also had Music Land. You had B. Dalton Booksellers. You had Babbage's and later Games, GameStop, of course. Hot Topic, Spencer's. Mr. Bulky's was there if you needed some candy. Of course, all the stuff in the food court we talked about. Um, and other stuff. You never knew what you might have. You'd have local stores sometime, especially more in this day and age, you'd have local stores there. So the mall was a fun place, and KB was a big anchor of that in my childhood, and that's why KB Toys comes in at number four. We're at the halfway point. Get your list together. Make sure you put it in the comments down below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe to this very YouTube channel, as I always do say. But number three, middle of the pack, probably the least exciting one on this list because it's still open. There's not a lot of memories compared to stuff that is closed. I understand that. But this one has always been a heavy hitter around me. It's always been good to find stuff. And I have some of my greatest toy hunting memories from there still to this day. Literally just a couple of minutes ago, I went to Target. I found a Hawkman Chase, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about Target. Target, always a good store, always a good stop for me. Of course, I come from the land of Targets where there's many Targets around me. And the closer you are to headquarters for any corporation, usually the stores are a little bit better. They look a little nicer. They're a little cleaner. Got to say, my Targets do a pretty good job in this area. And Target, of course, been around a heck of a long time, but a very, very fun store to find figures at. My earliest memories of finding Hasbros there back in the day, G.I. Joes back in the day. A lot of good surprises at Target, and I was very fortunate that Target was right there. I had the Holy Trinity right together. I had a KB with the mall, I had a Target and a Toys R Us. 
Oh, what a time to be alive that truly was. Uh, but Target still to this day always comes through for me. I usually find a lot of good stuff at Target. I have no real problems with Target. I like their distribution, like what they do. Liked them as a kid, I like them now. So coming in at number three, Target stores. Dangerously close to the top spot, we're at number two. And what's the number two store for me? Well, this is one of those ones that maybe you had, maybe you didn't. If you're a kid in the Midwest for me, especially the Northern Midwest, you knew all about children's palace oh it truly was a palace and a lot of the locations actually had like a castle out front it looked like a true castle and i'll never forget moving uh to des moines area as a little kid des moines iowa oh shout out des moines iowa moving there as a little kid and we were in south dakota at the time and i remember my dad saying children's palace is in des moines you know i'm getting you excited about moving and why wouldn't you be a children's palace hey sign me up and I remember there was like a, a cleaners or something, but it was like, looked like a castle. And I remember rolling into town, seeing, I'm like, that's got to be the children's palace. And I remember my dad having to tell me it was like a cleaners or a boot shop or something like that. And I'm like, that, how could that be? That's a palace. It should be children's palace. Well, children's palace was around town somewhere else, but a lot of good memories at children's palace. I knew about children's palace before I knew about Toys R Us. Toys R Us came when I was like seven years old maybe something like that and it quickly put children's palace out of business unfortunately children's palace closed down the rise of toys r us happened in my area which wasn't all bad of course but children's palace a lot of early memories and i'd never seen a store like that as a little kid i was used to the targets the walmarts ben franklin's the pomidas of the world uh walmart's an interesting one is walmart didn't come to my area until the late 90s if you can believe that so it was a little weird there were some rural ones that i'd go to when i went and visit my grandma but that was the only walmart experience i had so walmart Walmart's not on this list, but very fun at Children's Palace, just walls of G.I. Joe's. I remember that He-Man figures, things like that. I also remember they had like animals. It was like a PetSmart or a Petco in there. I remember they had uh, like birds and fish for sale and stuff. So it was a wild time at the old Children's Palace. It truly was a Children's Palace, I guess. But a lot of Joe's, Transformers, you name it, bought there over the years. And it just seemed like such a massive store. I remember it was probably because I was a really little kid, but it just seemed huge, humongous. I felt like I was in a real castle a lot of the times. Just a lot lot of fun memories from there that I still remember to this day. That's why Children's Palace coming in at number two, which leaves only one left. I'm sure you can guess what number one is, but stay tuned. All right, we're at the number one spot. As I always say, put your list in the comments down below. And of course, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to both YouTube channels. We got videos every single day. You don't want to miss out. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the old notification bell while you're at it. But what is the number one store? Well, no surprise. And I'm sure it's on a lot of the list here. It is Toys R Us. When my children's palace closed, Toys R Us took over. And I was thankful to have multiple Toys R Us's in my town. So my dad and I, we hit those a lot. We'd go to one. And then if you found something you wanted at one, uh-oh, they got them in. We better go to the second store. And we would do that a lot. Of course, like I said, children's palace closed down. The natural progression, go to Toys R Us. We all had friends friends at Toys R Us, uh, there was a really, really nice lady during the height the height of starting lineup madness. It was all these adult collectors that would be sprinting, waiting at the door. Then there was my dad and I. He had little Kyle there. Just think of me, but really little, like eight or nine, like my daughter Emma's size. And I would sprint, try to find these things and all that stuff. And uh, I want to say her name was like Linda or something. I don't remember what her name was. Uh, my dad would know. My dad would know if he was here. We'll ask him when, next time he's on the channel. Uh, but she was always really, really nice to us. And she would kind of give us a head, a heads up and maybe put some stuff away and say, hey, you might want to come at this time. And I think she thought of that because it was a father-son duo. It wasn't all these grown men by themselves. So she always kind of gave us the heads up on starting lineups and other stuff there. And I always thought that was a really cool thing. And that's one of the top memories I have from Toys R Us. But much like Children's Palace, much like the rest of these finding so much stuff over the years i remember hasbro seeing the hasbro figures for the first time ever the wwf hasbro just being shocked because there was no internet anything like that you walked in you'd walk into toys r us you'd go through kind of the corral and you'd come out well i remember they had a big display wall full of hasbros and i was all in on ljn's at the time just not being able to believe my eyes seeing all these new wrestling figures really blowing little kyle's mind at that time and then many years later you know i was pretty much out of wrestling figures because i didn't jump into the bendums but then the bone crunchers came and i remember seeing series one bone crunchers absolutely losing my mind i can't believe there's new wrestling figures they're like hasbro ljn's combined in some ways is what they felt like uh, times like marvel legends or i shouldn't say marvel legends marvel toy biz way back in the day the first ever x-men wave and then shortly after an x-force 
first wave. Little Kyle reading comic books. It was everything I dreamed of it to be. Talked about the starting lineup stuff. And then, of course, your usual Transformers, Star Wars. Uh, you know, Star Wars started to come back with Power of the Force. The late nights going there for that kind of stuff. Just so many memories of that Toys R Us. And then even after I was in college and then, uh, you know, got married and had a wife and all this stuff. Every Friday we'd go out to dinner. We'd go on a date and I'd say, oh, let's go to Toys R Us, just see what's going on. We'd go to Toys R Us every single Friday night. Then when my daughter Elle was born, she was little. I was very lucky the first couple of years of her life, she did get to go to Toys R Us. She really doesn't remember it, but there was a lot of fun times going there, walking up and down the aisles and stuff. Something that's definitely missing here in America because you Canadians up there, oh, shout out to Canada. One of these days, I'm going to make the journey up to Canada and I'm going to go to one of these Toys R Us's. I always hear about it, oh, they don't have anything, all that kind of stuff. It's not necessarily about that. That would be great, but it's about just recapturing that magic walking in. It would just be such a mental trip for me to do it. Love to take the kids. And what I'm thinking about doing is getting the wife and kids and saying, hey, we're going to Canada. We're going on this vacation. We're going to do all this kind of stuff. We would get up there, of course. And, oh, there's a Toys R Us. That'd be like first stop over the border. We'd hit that up and say, oh my gosh, a Toys R Us. Let's go through it. And then we'd go through and then I'd say, well, you know, I don't know about you guys. Let's leave Canada. Let's go back home. That's what we would do. So I don't know if I could get away with that, but I might try. Or maybe we'd go to more Toys R Us's. Who knows? But one day I'd like to step foot in a Toys R Us again. And now, of course, there's been a lot of stuff in the news as of late. Toys R Us coming back. We'll see. Fool me once. You know how that saying goes. But apparently Dallas-Fort Worth Airport is going to get a Toys R Us in it for the holidays. Can't imagine it being very big. But I will be in that airport for work. So you know, and during my uh, layover flight, you know I'm hitting that Toys R Us. And I'll have my camera in tow. So we'll film it. We'll find out what all the Toys R Us fuss is about this holiday season. But that's it. That's the top five nostalgic uh, toy stores from my childhood. Man, if I could just recapture that in a bottle, I still have a lot of fun out on the hunt, but nothing compares to that. I still tend to chase that feeling every single time I do go to a store. But it is a lot of fun, a lot of good memories, and I'm sure you guys have some of those same memories as well. Make sure you put them in the comments down below. So there it is, my top five nostalgic toy stores as a kid. And like I said, put your list in the comments down below. Of course, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the old notification bell. You don't want to miss a video. Check out the Patreon for early access to all the videos from both channels. Best way to support the channel as well. You can also support the channel at ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. Don't forget social media. Sir Paul 64 on the X, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on threads and on Instagram. So there it is for another top five list. I am Kyle. I'll see you guys all real soon.